Chris, we had an alliance announcement on Tuesday, my friend, and it was uh, about as anticlimactic as you could possibly get. I why why there was a need to announce this, I I still am not sure. Do you have any idea? Nope. No clue at all. I would love to be one of these commissioners right now, but no, I have no idea what these guys are doing. So I wrote down notes. I took notes from the the press conference, from the Zoom meeting, and the first thing, they sent out a press release, all right? Sent out the press release. It includes a scheduling arrangement in football and men's and women's basketball. So that's cool, I guess. The other thing is, they are going to be working together on a whole slew of topics. And I'm I'm interested in this, uh, I guess, because I don't know exactly what it means. They put in the statement, student-athlete mental and physical health, safety, wellness, and support, strong academic experience and support, diversity, equity, and inclusion, social justice, gender equity, future structure of the NCAA, federal legislative efforts, postseason championships, and future formats. That is what they are working together on. That is what this alliance is all about. Why Why wouldn't all conferences be aligned in that kind of crap anyway? Like I, I don't, and, and I'm sure they are. That's the, dis- yeah. that's the issue, is I'm sure they are. If you go to any of these G5 schools that are being completely left out of here, they are. The, the SEC totally is. You're, you're talking about, a conference that that stood up to a state that has not one but two members in the state of Mississippi, and and kind of tried to help strong arm bully them into to removing the rebel flag. Something I didn't I didn't think would ever happen in our state uh, from our from our state flag growing up here my entire life. So they 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 absolutely are that they, they absolutely are. All of these conferences are aligned in all of these things. Uh, this is just weird. I, this this is like kids on a playground seeing the two coolest guys in the room hanging out being buddies not necessarily bullying everybody else but kind of doing their own thing and not really giving a shit about anybody else which is more insulting than anything like like i honestly think and and i've heard i've heard comedians talk about this before that you know someone once you know walked up to a guy and they're like man i i thought i thought you hated me and the guy just looked at him was like no i don't hate you I don't, I don't think about you at all ever and just walked on. It was just like, I think I'd have rather been hated. Yes. Like, like you, you don't even acknowledge my existence. And that's why, that's why they're doing this is they're insecure and, and they're scared and they're nervous and they all feel like we got to do something yes. because the SEC did something. And the only thing that, that they are not aligned with the SEC on, I think and even then, I don't know, is the postseason championships and future formats, right? And we'll, we'll get to that here in just a minute. Before that, I want to bring up the three commissioners on the Zoom. You you saw the video, right? You saw what they looked like. God, the green screen was just so <laughs> bad. Green screens are, are not great anyway, but, uh, but this one, I mean, it just, it, it was comical with all of them. These are the all conferences one. that make millions and millions of dollars and they put tens of dollars into doing this yes <laughs> it's just remarkable i've got i've got more uh, money in my pocket right now than what they spent on somebody putting this together for them yes and for anybody that has not seen it if you are watching the youtube video i'm going to make this the thumbnail but it is the three commissioners on a zoom call and all of them have the same uh, virtual background that is the three logos the acc big 10 pack 12 and it is, it's hilarious. Like, you you have to see it. So go and check it out if you have not seen it. Jim Phillips was asked about expansion. And he said, we have not made a decision where the ACC, where the ACC will fall. That's That was his comment. Kevin Warren said that he is a believer in expanding the CFP, but also we need to be methodical and do our homework. And George Klyovkov, the commissioner of the Pac-12, said, he is 100% in favor of expansion of a college football playoff. He just said that there are issues at the margins. So there's things that we need to work out. But I, I found all three of those answers interesting because two of them seem aligned. The ACC said, yeah, we don't really know what we're going to do yet. It's like, I thought this was an alliance. I thought this is what we were here for. And instead, <laughs> the first question is, 
and we hadn't really decided yet. Like, <laughs> so right out of the gate, we're already like, mm, okay. And this isn't a brain buster of a question. You know this is coming up. You know college football expansion has been a big, the playoff expansion has been in the news for the last, I don't know, eight months, nine months. It, they started while. leaking this stuff out. You how do you how are you not prepared for that question? I have no idea. I have no idea. So everybody is excited about the scheduling alliance, right? Like that's, oh, yeah. that's the thing We're, everybody wants. Woo! Um, Northwestern Wake Forest. Here we come, baby. There you go. There you go. Well, and this think, is a guy that loves Northwestern, by the way. Of course, of course. But hundreds of people will watch that football game. Kevin, hundreds. Kevin Warren said the scheduling alliance will not interfere with existing contracts. So all those games, like Ohio State, Alabama. Uh, whatever's going on in 2032, that will all still happen. So there will be no issues there. Let's see. George Klyovkov said teams will have flexibility to schedule games versus any conference that they want. So so there's an alliance to schedule with these other conferences that you are on this alliance call with, but we're not limited to that. Yeah, if you want to go outside of that, you can Okay, so so if USC wants to play Notre Dame, we're not going to stop that. Score one more for the Alliance, I suppose, right? Okay. Hey, how, how's that a score? We're, we're already agreed on what we already do. That's that's what I'm saying. Like, we're fun. <laughs> I'm 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 about to get political here. We're fundamentally not going to change anything. Basically, oh. yes. And, oh, that, oh, okay. and that's what the Alliance is. And we like, need an Alliance to do that. Apparently so. I guess they're – so I, we'll, we'll get to some of it here towards the end of the press conference. Uh, Jim Phillips then comes out and says – he's asked about the Big 12. He said that we want and need the Big 12 to do well. The Big 12 matters in P5 athletics, in, in Power 5 athletics. I could not – like, I, I couldn't even deal with, with hearing this, right? Max Olson – asked Jim Phillips afterwards to explain why the Big 12 is not a partner in the alliance. And the bottom line was, it's too much uncertainty right now with that conference, basically. Now, again, towards the end of this segment, we will, we will discuss this because it got really funny right after their, their press conference. I mean, wow. because everybody went and started talking to all these other reporters, and it just became very ridiculous. Uh, it says there's a huge unsettling of the membership and where schools are going to prominent uh, institutions. The Big 12 has been around a lot of years and has meant a lot to college sports and college athletics. Again, as I stated, the three of us feel strongly about doing whatever we can to try to help. As far as this particular alliance, I think there's uncertainty. There's uncertainty in what's going on between two conferences. There just is. How long, when, who goes where, etc. And we felt that the three of us and the conferences that we represent in the broad-based program that we're committed to and the like-minded values that I described earlier, that we had a chance to stabilize it. And we're all hopeful that this will allow a conference like the Big 12 to figure out their path forward. So there's a lot of moving parts, but that was part of our rationale on putting together an alliance. <laughs> and, and when we get to the other news here in a little bit, this, this might make a little more sense. But it, I did find it funny, like, if, if you're so worried about the Big 12... Why would you not include those schools and that current conference commissioner at the table? You would not have to include Texas and Oklahoma if you don't want to. Like, you could just include those schools as part of the alliance. This is, hang on now. I know exactly what this is. This is trying to, to talk up a four to a seven. Yes. Because you, because you know you're about to land that four. That's, that's what and, I'm going to get to. You, a bit. And you need... And you need so bad for people to see them as a seven. Yes. Klyovkov said that there is no signed contract, that they don't no. need a signed contract. Jim Phillips said it's about trust. We have looked each other in the eye and made it an agreement. These poor bastards. <laughs> this is, They've been in college uh, football for five minutes. Oh my God, they're gonna you know what's gonna happen? You know what wouldn't surprise me? In in like four months from now, we're we're getting into like close to the end of the season, the off season of college football. Jim Delaney, the old college football shark that's been around forever, is going to eat all three of these conferences. <laughs> the Big Twelve is going to be the most powerful conference of them all. That would be hilarious. He's gonna uh, he's gonna land all of them. He's gonna cut these bastards' throats. He's gonna put them in a meat grinder. Oh, it'd be God so Almighty! So ridiculous. Oh, um, this is insane. This is so dumb. If, if this there's is no, dumb. If there's no signed contract, what are we doing? 
What are we doing? Like, ain't no, no, no. Is there no signed contract? We're not doing anything. We're just three guys that aren't getting talked about, except for we're getting made fun of. Yes. And so we got to do, we got to get out in front of that because we can't let people make fun of us. Well, I'm sorry. This is the day of the internet. We're going to make fun of you. Yes. And, and what you did today made it so oh. much easier. Wow. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. ACC, your TV deal sucks. And we're going to laugh at that. Okay. We like, la- we're SEC guys. We laughed at the SEC TV deal for the last seven years. We've laughed at the SEC TV deal. All right, with CBS, like the, the, the Pac-12 can't even get started on laughing at them and the shit show that they've been for the last five six years. Oh, so yes. yeah, yeah, you're you, and you're just making it worse. You're just making it worse. You're making a mockery of what this sport is. You really are. Yes. Kevin Warren and Jim Phillips, the Big Ten Commissioner and the ACC Commissioner, both mentioned the need to stabilize college athletics because apparently everything is moving too fast right now. We got to slow it down. We got to stabilize things. All right now, I'm I'm an old man, and I've said this. Yeah. All of the change happening all the time is bothering me. I want us to get to a point. I want us to get to twelve teams. I want everybody where you're going to get aligned to get the hell aligned. And then let's sit here for a couple of years like we've had the last several years. Okay. Yes. That's but, all but I you, that's all I want. But we also know that the Big Ten's TV contract is coming up in 2023. We know the Pac 12s is coming up in 2025. And we know that the playoff expansion uh, will have to happen or the, the new contract will be signed heading into the 2026 season. So that stuff is right around the corner. Like we are in yes. 2021. So what we would like uh, you and myself included, is, yes, to get to a point where it sits still for a little bit, but we are so obviously not at that point yet. Like, uh, there is a lot that is going to change in the next five years in this sport, and to think that it won't is is just pulling the wool over your own eyes, I think, like for, for these commissioners. I mean, it's just absolutely absurd. So it, it, they both mentioned the need to stabilize college athletics. And then, finally, there was... A, a brief discussion about the scheduling alliance and Kevin Warren and George Klyovkov both mentioned that they may move from nine conference games down to eight conference games. Now four years, the big 10 and, and the PAC 12, et cetera, have talked about the ridiculousness of the sec and the ACC only playing eight game conference schedules. They've done it forever. And now their own commissioners are saying, eh, wait a minute, we might need to do this. Klyovkov specifically mentioned that they would do that to create more value for their television partners. ESPN, if they could get the SEC to move to a 10-game conference schedule, would take it in a heartbeat because there is value in that. SEC against SEC there is value if you have more SEC games. We just have bigger teams, though, Gary. Oh, we agreed. just have more schools that, that, that pull a bigger draw than, than, than these other schools. You're and that's, explaining that's my fine. point. But, like, like Klyovkov didn't say those things in the past, okay, about, about how precious it was for them to make the nine-game schedule. No, One of no, the reasons Klyovkov was probably brought in was because he saw the writing on the wall that we have to change. All right. Yes. And and Kevin Warren the same thing. And, and you know, so so that doesn't. I'm not going to knock them for this because I actually think they're right. All right. Oh, you, I, I you think know, they're absolutely right. I don't believe if, that they're if wrong. Clemson, if Clemson got to play a nine or ten game ACC schedule, I'd throw the hell up. All right. Yeah. Now you. <laughs> yes, I agree. I do agree. And, and instead, they get South Carolina at the end of every year. Which Congratulations. Used to be, well, it used to you, be a tough game. You get one of the worst SEC schools, so you can say, look at our record against the SEC. I'd love it when these guys do it, by the way. I love it. I love it when Oklahoma gets the shit kicked out of them by LSU, but they, you know, you know, they play Tennessee and they play Arkansas and they play a couple of low feeders on the table and they're like, look at our record against the SEC. We're so great. Like, mm, I don't really, I don't really know that's how it works out. Have you beaten Auburn? Have you beaten Georgia, Florida? Like any of the decent ones, I'm not even talking about Alabama. All right, I, I, you know, have you have you beaten any of the other good ones? A and M, any That's of them? It, well, no? it, to to Oklahoma's credit, they do have a winning record against Alabama. When was the last but, time they played Alabama, Gary? 
Well, I mean, it was the Orange Bowl, but they they got whipped in the Orange Bowl okay. a couple years ago. Before that, what was the last time they beaten Alabama? Let's say uh, the Sugar Bowl in twenty thirteen. After the twenty thirteen season, I guess it was. Yeah. So, but it was you know, it's the Sugar Bowl. It's Alabama had lost to. It was fifteen years ago. Yeah, it was. Well, no, okay. it's like eight years ago. But either way, either way, like still, you remember Trevor Knight? Like that was the night that Trevor Knight went off in the in the Sugar Bowl. But regardless, I do see exactly where you're coming from. It's the the records are ridiculous, absolutely ridiculous. So after all this gets done, uh, Phillips closes it out by saying. Three motivated commissioners came together to do the right thing at the right time. Is Waste this, time. Is this resources. the right thing at the right time? Is that is that what this is? Well, we well, hang on, but they didn't do anything. That's <laughs> it's not even a thing. It's not the right they, thing or the I wanna thing. know I wanna know billable hours, I don't know, man hours of people on the clock at these three conference commissioners' offices. I want to know what it costs them over the last two to three weeks of talking about this alliance and putting it all together to come up with this dandy of a plan. I would like to know that. I, remember, are, like, remember, remember back when politicians would be like, you know, somebody would go on like an investigation for like two to three weeks to try to get the other one in trouble. And then the other one was like, you spent three million dollars in two and a half weeks and we could have saved 400,000 homeless people for that. Like, remember when we used to do that like back in the, that's like old school politics. All right. That yes. was back when we were civil. All right. That was civilized <laughs> politics in the nineties. Most of you kids would know about this, but no, like this is, this is what, like, I want somebody to be like, it, Y'all spent this much money to have a conversation that ended up in we're fundamentally not going to change anything. Yeah. Like, we're going to keep things the same. We might start playing each other more. Like, maybe. That's, that's, maybe. maybe. We don't even maybe. know that. Because they're but also. If we can get, hang like, on. <laughs> if we can get a home game against Texas or Oklahoma or Alabama or LSU or Georgia, then we're going to take that because that's going to draw 8 million viewers. Yes. So, yes. so while, while we don't like those sons of bitches from the South, we, we don't want to upset them too bad because if they want to ever do a home and home, it'll be the biggest game we draw in a decade. Yes. Yes. If, 100%. if USC got a, a home and home with one of the big boys of the SEC, it would be the biggest draw that USC has had. I mean, the Notre Dame USC doesn't draw that. Won't, won't come close to it. Yes. I, I do agree with you. Thanks for listening to the Winning Cures Everything podcast. The website is winningcureseverything.com, and if you want to connect with us, we're on Twitter, at GaryWCE, at ChrisBGiannini, at Winning Cures, or you can email us, Gary at winningcureseverything.com, or Chris at winningcureseverything.com. Subscribe everywhere you need to subscribe, and we'll see you soon.